Welcome. Uh, I'm Michaela from the Hogart Club and I'm very happy to offer a hip mobility sequence. Beautiful session where you have in every posture options to make it a little bit more intense or keep it as a very simple hip opener, th 360 degrees. So every possible um, hip mobilization that I could think of, I have put together in a beautiful se sequence for you. By taking part in these online exercise programs, you confirm that you have read and understood the health commitment statement at the Hogart website, www.thehogart.co.uk. You agree not to participate in any activity if you have any existing or new medical conditions. You understand that you exercise at your own risk and are ultimately responsible for your own general health and welfare. We do not advise to exercise if you've just had a heavy meal in the last two hours, if you're on painkillers, if you've been drinking alcohol, and those are not suitable for pregnant uh, women simply because hip will be open naturally when you become pregnant anyway, so they would need uh, the opposite. <laughs> well, let's start and I hope you have fun. To begin with, please come to all fours and we are going to lift the leg with the bent knee to the side and back down. Now, many of you find this position not so easy, so you can work on fists, lifting the right leg up and down. So keep the knee in alignment with the other knee, lifting it and lowering it. Let's say five times. It is um, more important that you get the rotation and feel into your body. It might be that you can't lift it as high as you see here and that doesn't matter. If you want to make it a little bit more juicy, you can lift the leg up and just tap the foot and lift, tap and lift. So this is very strong on the outer glutes already. Another option, as I said, I'll give you in every position things to make it a bit more interesting. Second side, breathe in. As you exhale, draw the navel up so the core must be engaged. Otherwise, we overarch the lower back. And by just um, lifting the leg to the side, welcome yourself onto the mat. Welcome and accept your body as you are today, right now. No expectations, what it should be like, no memories, what it what used to be like. Just be happy that you can move. And then again, the option with the leg straight. You don't have to do that. You can continue or rest entirely up to you and lift and lower and just feel a little bit. And hopefully you have right away felt this area heating up. Now flatten your hands and just level the, the hips to the right, to the back, to the left and up. So beautiful circle three times. Just widen to ground yourself and then to the other side three times that you feel even so that we don't favor a side. And then we're going to do a hip flexor stretch. So please bring your left foot forward and the fingertips in line with the front foot. Now, for some of you, this is already demanding because many can't bring their hands down, especially if you're athletes or very um, um, experienced runners. So for that reason, it's very clever to have two brick blocks. And if you don't have brick blocks, check this out. You might have a book that you just wrap with a towel and some tape, and you have two either side and you're ready to go. So no, no need to purchase anything. Wherever you are, knee over ankle, slide the back leg back to your maximum. Just breathe, feel, then tuck the toes under of the back leg. And as you exhale, lift the knee, lengthen the chest forward five times, lower, and lift. Now it doesn't look like much, but I often see in classes people lifting the bum, 
like this. Oh, this is easy. And that's not it. So switch legs, please, to the other side. Right leg forward. Five repetitions minimum is a good thing. Knee over ankle to stabilize the shin bone. Sliding the back leg back to um, a comfortable place. And then again, hands either side of the front foot on brick blocks or if you prefer a chair, good idea. What we do is we are extending the left hip flexor by bending and extending. Now keep the bum as low as it is when you extend and not go up and down with the hips and you'll certainly feel the inner leg, the inner hip flexor extending. At the same time project the heart forward so you really heat up that area with elongation. And then step back, feel your hips and then this is a very clever thing to do so you feel really happy to go upside down. Grab your mat with both hands, fingers under, and then lift your seat up into the sky. And today walk around. So it's all about the movement and the freedom in your hips. If you go for long walks often, the hips will stiffen. If you sit all the time because you have to work a lot in front of your computer, they will be very grateful to move. So turn the left heel towards the right heel and then bring the left heel down whilst you're bending the right knee and then stretch the left hip back fully and just feel how beautifully that extends the leg down. I show the other side from the back just to be clear. So it's right heel down, left heel up and the left knee bend fully and then hold on to the mat Stretch the chest and leg back, so really lengthen the right hip towards the back. Feel that. And then come back down. A classic um, hamstring stretch. We throw that in for good measure. So all you do is you rock forward and back. We're not holding in a position just until you feel the hip, um, the hamstring here switching on. I like to work it here with the toes flexed back because it gives you that extra engagement. And you might only come to here and that's good. Bring the heel down and do not move the heel, but pull the entire foot, kneecap, hip back. And then come up. If you're very energetic, jump switch. Or just step, all fine. And then a little bit of rocking forward and back just to say hello to your hamstring. No extreme stretches here, just a soothing dance to open up every muscle group around the hips as well. So five times approximately, you can hit the pause button at any time if something makes total sense and do more. And then come back to downward facing dog as you had either this side or the hands flat. You go <laughs> with what feels good in your body, raise the right leg up, bend the right knee and open the right knee to the side. So basically you are stacking the right hip on top of the left hip. And then you bend the knee, the left knee, the leg that's on the floor, you lift it and then bring the heel down and you lift it up. So you go knee bent, knee straight, heel down, heel up. All the time you're moving on that uh, warming up of the left leg, you keep the right foot flexed, the right knee bent, and then after the third one, you stay with the leg straight. Now see if you can bring the top leg as far away towards the left side as you can. So you reach the foot back fully. Keep the tailbone long, the navel from front, and then come back down. See how that feels when you come down. Rock the hips a little bit from side to side. And the second side I do in normal downward facing pose. Come up to downward facing dog, arms straight. Raise the left leg up, 
Bend the left knee, flex the foot really well. Lift the left knee and turn it open. So the knee points towards the left, the foot points towards the right. And then work with the leg that's on the ground by bending and lengthening. Keep the arms super straight. Keep the arms strong by hugging the forearms in. Keep the neck soft whilst you're bending the knee, extending the knee, bringing the heel towards, which means it might not touch, and back. A couple more times. And then you stay up there, maximum length, and then you kick the top foot away from you. So see how that feels. You cannot see. You keep the head in neutral. You just feel into that outer stretch. And then that's that. Begin to walk the feet to the middle of the mat and then come halfway up. You have just been in, a, in an inversion for a little time. So it's not advised to come up straight away. So hang out here a little bit. Catch your breath and let the blood flow neutralize again. From here, feet parallel. So knee, hip, bones, middle of the ankle, second, third toe. It's a very stabilizing position. And then just leave the legs as they are and swing the arms forward and back. So free your shoulders a little bit. Inhale to rise and exhale, draw the navel towards the spine. And for good me measure, I like to throw in a shoulder opener here. So interlace the hands behind you on the lower back, bend the elbows, lift the arm bones up, the elbows up, and then slowly bend forward a little bit and raise the arms up towards the heavens. It doesn't matter how high you go. Now straighten the right leg, bend the left knee, and turn the chest open towards the sky. So right ribs, up right shoulder back. And then come back center and do the same thing on the other side. Left leg bent, right, left leg straight, right knee bent, sorry, shoulder blades. And then come back center. And then slowly stand up. How are you doing? Stand and rotate the hips in the figure of eight. So you have to just soothe it out. Because the next thing we do is the warrior two position and we're going to hold it for a little bit longer than usual. Stand in the middle of your mat, open the legs wide, open the front leg towards the front of your mat and check that you are heel to mid arch alignment. And then turn the back toes in a little bit. And then lift up. Now squeeze the legs towards each other that you raise the pelvis. And as you exhale, make fists bend the knee a little bit, bend the elbows. And inhale, lift. Now this is a very good starting position to bring the energy up. So you're not going to disperse the legs down into the floor. You think about pulling the legs towards each other the entire time. And that's necessary because now we're going to hold it here. Relax the arms for a moment. Look at your back leg. And very often, and I show this here, the back thigh wants to roll in. So can you take the thigh back, in line, hip bone, middle of the knee, middle of the ankle. And if you do that, notice what's happening to the front of the knee. Very often, it wants to collapse to the inside. So wind it towards the little toe side. By now, your left hip should be burning. So breathe in, shoulders up, shoulders back, and shoulders down. One more time, inhale, back and down, just to distract yourself. And then bring the elbows in like so to the ribs and open the forearms, offer your practice to something good, and then reach out. Now the chest, the shoulders are open, just flip the hands so you're not narrowing. And then gaze over the middle finger with determination. And here is the advanced part. Close your eyes and you'll cook your left hip with heat and love. Now bring the hands to the hips. Come up. Bring the feet together. Did something happen? Did you feel a little bit of sensation? I really do hope so. 
So ease it out with the figure of eight. So your joints only receive a positive stress. <laughs> I'll show the other leg turning backwards so you can see the legs from both sides. Have the legs wide apart, ideally as wide so that the ankles are underneath the wrists, but for some it feels unstable. So I'm totally fine if you narrow a little bit so that you feel solid. And then pull the legs together, lift the arms and exhale, bend. So soothe yourself into that first. Don't go as low as you possibly could because we're holding this for a little while. Use this motion to tease you into the warrior position. And then again, don't let the left thigh collapse forward. Don't let the inner knee collapse to the inside. By keeping the awareness here to widen those, you will really open the inner groins as well. Then arms down, breathe up, arm bones up, arm bones back, shoulder blades down. Again, in both up, back and down. Last one, forearms, offering, open. This is so nice for the shoulder blades. The bottom tips of the shoulder blades come together whilst the collarbones are smiling out. Now reach evenly in both directions. So don't lean forward or backwards, stay even. Flip just the hands and then gaze over your left middle finger. And again, Stay there, press the back heel down, keep the tailbone long, keep the spine straight and close your eyes if you dare. And then release. And then hands on the hips, step together. Feel, walk. Anything I offer, I'd like you to try with wisdom. Some things might be too intense, some things might be too easy. So I do the best to give you options. Stand at the back of your mat for warrior one. Rotate the right foot out to what would be two o'clock on a, a sundial. And then step the left leg forward and bend the knee. This is the beginning of warrior one position. Have the knee over the ankle or behind the ankle. Never over the toes because it puts too much strain on the knee. So. The hips are slightly open here. Now rotate the rib cage to the front. Lean a little bit forward because you can feel it's um, arching the lower back. Now do everything you can to extend the tailbone down. This is the motor here. Tailbone down, lift the arms. Inhale, come up, straighten both legs. Exhale, tailbone long and come up. Inhale, third one, stay here. If you need to climb the foot forward a little bit, you'll feel it really nicely here. The ribs are even, the hips are asymmetrically open. Now tailbone and lift the belly, the chest and the chin, maybe press the hands together. Then let's play. Hands to prayer. Step forward, place the fingertips onto the floor, bring your right hand on the hips and lift the back leg. You can keep the left knee bent a little bit. But tuck the left buttocks under and then lift the back leg as high as you can and reach through the back heel. Now you can stay here and have a nice time to warm up the standing leg hip. Or you can bend the top leg, reach back to the foot, hold the foot and then kick the foot away from the bum. So the shin bone reaches towards the back, the right shoulder lifts and curls to the back of your heart and then stretch the chest forward and up and you have a back bend and a thigh stretch and the balance and it's called Ardha Chapa Chambasana so it's the half moon sugarcane bows and then come back down feet together ground yourself come up second side I show from behind I'm not turning the back to you I'm just Demonstrating left foot pointing towards 10 o'clock, hips, back hip, the left hip should begin to rotate forward, the right hip to begin pulling back as you bend the front knee. So lengthen the tailbone and then reach the arms. Straighten the legs, 
tailbone action first. We don't like to use the word tucking the buttocks under, but it's a little bit in that direction. You don't want to overarch the lower back, especially if you're sensitive in that area. And then stay here, maybe climb a little bit more forward, lift the chest, the chin, press the hands together, and then prayer, honor in front of your own heart. When you bring the fingertips forward, bring them a little bit towards the right, underneath your shoulder. You can keep the standing leg bent or lifted, but press into the middle of the heel, that helps. Let the right hip not escape towards the right, so I show that how it's not done on the video, but tuck it under, reach it forward. Bend the back knee, hold the foot, and then press the foot back so it opens the shoulder. Reach the chest towards the front of the mat, which is my front now. Rotate, hold, or not. If you fall, you fall. Bend the knee, honor that you're trying, and that's good. Before we go to the floor, the hip opener I like most is with the help of the wall. So what you do is you go into a figure of four, flexing the foot dramatically. So much so that the inseam of the foot is um, free of any rocks here. You see that that's tickling the foot. So you explore how you can flatten the skin completely. Then the inner knee is protected. So you find a wall space, come to figure of four and sit down. Now look down, you should reach the hips back enough that you can see the toes that's on the floor. Now lift the right knee a little bit and take the left hand against the foot. Now I'm going to do it in this perspective so you can really see. So you press the hand against the foot, the foot against the hand and that creates a nice resistance. Now reach the inner thighs back fully. Keep the right knee slightly lifted, don't press it down. Reach the inner groins back. Now you can play here by bringing the chest forward, or you can bring the torso up, or you can bring the arms all the way down to the floor. This is just if you feel really you need more then you can bring the hands down towards the earth, bend the elbows towards each other, lift the chest, lift the back foot. And on good days, you can extend the back leg towards the sky. Joking. Now, I'm not naturally very open in my hips. I had to work, I'm talking 20 years. So what seemed like science fiction in, it, science fiction in the beginning is possible now because of that slow build-up. Go to the other side. I have given birth to two kids. I had knee operations. So be inspired that if I can do that, <laughs> there's hope. <laughs> I was very ill when I started and I was starting late in yoga. Hold it. I'll try to distract you so you can stay here. Foot fully flexed. Then you hold foot against hand. So foot presses against the hand, hand presses against the foot. Reach the inner thighs down. So look, I demonstrate the direction. I cross the forms and really reach them down. Then the hips back until you feel the left hip switching on. Stay and breathe. And yoga offers us always the wisdom. If the riding gets tough, breathe slower, deeper. So that helps you to hold this. And then you stay, Utkatasana, the chair pose, or flat, or all the way down, or a little arm balance if you want to throw that in. You wrap the toes around you, you pull the elbows towards each other, and maybe you can do balance here and lift the foot off. This is really fully intense and only um, happy as an experience if the knee is protected. And with the flat toes, you do just that. Come up and feel. <laughs> Ready to go salsa dancing. Now, the classic hip opener, of course, is the pigeon, which I like to call the dove. 
I like it. It's more elegant. <laughs> bring the right knee behind the right wrist and bring the shin to an angle, 45 degrees. Press the toes down and then slide the back leg back, however far it can be. Bring the hands forward a little bit. Now, I'm going to turn around to be very clear here. This is not pigeon toes. You have to have the knee wider than the hip at an angle. And some techniques also support the right hip, but we're going somewhere here today. So I'd like to offer the technique that helped me most. Pull the front knee and the back knee towards each other. So instead of flopping down, you pull the energy up and it lifts the pelvis so much that you can take the hands off. So pull the knees towards each other. It's very active. Have a look at your back leg if it's really straight. Hip, middle of the knee, middle of the ankle, second, third toe. And then come a little bit more forward and to the right side in a prayer position. So you align the spine over the right knee. Breathe, stay. Most importantly here is uh, to keep the knees pressing towards each other gently. So you keep the engagement, the belly lifted. And then inhale, do the same thing to the other side. So you go off mat to the left corner here. And notice how different that feels. It's a completely different set of micro um, muscles that are called to action here. And then inhale, come to center, still not rolling down yet. I'd like to offer you a breathing here. So you pump the breath actively out with the belly lifted on every exhalation. Then we do it about five times. Then we inhale, hold the breath. And after the exhalation, you fully extend out. So come with me, inhale, exhale completely through the nose only. Now inhale and hold. Hold as long as you can. Get still. And when you feel the need to exhale, you extend now the back inner heel back and the front arms forward to its maximum. And that will really stretch it out. And maybe or not, the right hip might come towards the floor. It takes years. Don't worry if that's not happening. Or don't worry ever. And just for fun, a little twist here since we are in pigeon. Clap your right knee with the left hand, lengthen the chest forward, lift the arm towards the ceiling. That might be enough. Or you bend the elbow, bring the hand to the bind and find your toe. Can you see the toe? Yeah, you hold. Still pulling the knees towards each other, lifting the chest, opening up. And then slowly press the hands down, lift the hips, and then feel in all fours. And you have deprived here the hip with blood flow a little bit. Now it's rushing back in. So you might want to celebrate that by shaking the leg out in a three leg downward facing dog. Well done. Same sequence to the other side, which I'll be showing from the back. So the left knee wider than the left hip, the shin bone at an angle, the right leg extending back in one even line, hip bone, middle of the knee, ankle. By bringing the hands a little bit forward, you protect the lower back. You don't want to overarch right now. You're focusing on a different area. And then pull the hips together, pull the knees together. Keep the front foot active, the toes pressing down, and then lift a little bit just to check. Am I so strong that I can take the hands off? You don't have to, but that's the energy we're working with. And then lift the belly, come forward and towards the left. So that's the side of the bent knee. Come to a prayer position. 
and I mentioned um, blocks earlier, so maybe this is not good or possible for you. So you can stay up there, totally fine. Keep reaching the knees towards each other. Lift the belly, stay, pray, breathe, and then walk over to the other side just to feel. You go off center, just to widen here the inner thighs towards the back, I'm showing with my hands, because English is not my mother tongue, and you can always blame my accent if something is not crystal clear. Or I invite you to get in touch, ask. I love that. Come to the center, forearms to the floor, if possible, or up there. And then keep pulling the legs together and then the good breath here five times. Inhale, exhale, and then very pushy the belly up towards the spine. Inhale completely. Hold. Really hold. And when you are ready, to extend and extend leg and thigh, even measures apart from each other, really diving deep into that. And then come back out and cup your left knee with the right hand, lengthen the chest up, raise the left arm if it's in your range, stay there or take the arm behind you, finding the big toe and hook the big toe with the second and the third finger. This requires quite a bit of shoulder opener as well, so it's not your hip, just in case you worry. And then inhale, come up. Exhale, slowly press the leg back, feel into the left leg, shake it in celebration. Hello, you can rotate the foot and the ankle and the knee and the hips and be free to move. It's never, um, a dogma, it's an invitation, what we are offering in yoga. I like to do just a little twist before we go to lay on our backs. So keep it super easy by sitting and crossing the foot over to the outside of the knee and the thigh. Now, if you find your rounding, you might want to sit on a towel, a blanket, some sort of support. So the lower back moves in and up and then hold the elbow around your knee. Raise the right arm up towards the heavens and then with the fingertips, tuck it behind you to support you. The left forearm pulls the knee towards the heart. The knee pushes out against the forearm and that makes the twist so interesting because it has a direct effect on rooting the right hip down. So the, the focus here is not how much can I twist, it's how well can I root my hip in order to create the freedom to then twist a little bit further. Second side, I show from the other side, left leg crossing over, toes pointing up, sit on as many height as you feel comfortable with, especially if the hamstrings are short, this might not be ideal, so play with that. And then hold the forearm towards your knees, pull it towards you, but with the knee, resist that and clunk. You have immediately that solid feeling of bringing the femur bone deep into the floor. And then raise the left arm up, low back moves in and up. Support yourself on the fingertips because it's more height. Open the left shoulder and then work this action again, forearm in, knee out, forearm in, knee out. So you make that communication in your hip to create that opening in the upper torso. <laughs> and then come back center. Uh, I show from this side. A little bridge position just to fire up the hamstrings and then it's getting beautiful. So lay down towards the floor arms by your side and as earlier on you can grab the hands towards the mat and it helps so nicely to keep you stable and steady in the middle of your mat. 
and then hip bones in line with the knees, in line with the middle of the heels. Lift and raise your hips a couple of times, but just ease into that. And then use the time to bring the shoulder blades more towards each other, so the side of the chest is lifted. Can you soften the base of your throat here? Can you keep the eyes at ease? Now you can do this a couple more times, or you can lift the right heel. Slowly bring the knee towards your chest and then go up and down. So this is really beautiful for the back of the left leg, the hamstrings, the glutes. If you feel in a celebration mode, you can extend the top leg, makes not a huge difference. And then bring it back down. Pause a little bit between sides and then come up again. If you like to interlace the hands underneath you, that's a lovely thing to do while you keep holding on. Left knee towards the chest and whilst you up, go up and down slightly, it's not the biggest bridge position, it's more about that teasing, dancing, rolling sensation. Make sure that the right hip is not lower than the left hip. Keep them even. Whether or not you extend the top leg, it doesn't matter. Keep pulsing and pumping. And then come back down. Pulse, feel. And then we do something very nice. It's the pigeon on the back. So bring the right knee towards you. Extend the left leg until it hovers. So the heel is reaching forward, toes are active. And then come up with the chest. And turn the knee out and the shin in, as you have done before uh, in the pigeon position. Now take the right arm under. So the right forearm is really close to the knee. So really, elbow underneath the, the kneecap and the other hand holds the foot. If this is easy, you can take the other forearm. You can walk a little bit from side to side. Recognize this is what you've done at the wall. It's the same position. And then this is for playtime. <laughs> if you feel you want to take it further, take the right arm out of that business behind you Cross the hands behind your head, rest the head. You're hooking the fingers, and it's really lovely to feel the outer hip here in this twisted weird position. And then release. So all these options are for experienced practitioners. If you want to have fun, if you feel super healthy, if the knees are giving you no other feedback than happiness, and that's a good idea to try. Left knee towards you. Left knee turns out at 45 degree angle, approximately. Then extend the right leg, it hovers, come up and take the left forearm, the left elbow into the knee, the back of the knee. And this is actually a very therapeutic thing to do because it um, gives more space for the knee, so it's very safe. Then look at your left foot, keep it super flexed and wrinkle-free, as we have done before. Hold the foot and have a good time. Or take the forearm here as well. I'm turning around so I can see you at the end. There we go. And then take the left arm out behind you hook the hands and some of you are even able to drop the right foot down towards the floor or lower the forearm down towards the floor especially those um, at the yoga who have been coming i know some of you are very very easy to um happy to do this with ease and then release come back down rest and then there's only one thing more I'd like you to uh, try, which is for the inner groins. It's the classic frog position. 
and I'm very keen in giving you the anatomical details here. So this is a frog position. The feet are flexed, the hips are in line, knees are apart. I show from all four sides. And that really opens the inner groins. Like so, I show from all sides so you can fully see. So the ankles and the knees are in one line. Now this might be plenty, or you can come down to your forearms. Now we do not rock forward and backwards because I'd like to offer a different way of working this. And it has to do with the spirals, which is very clever. So here, flex the foot, the feet very, very wildly. So they are switched on. Then pull the knees towards each other. So you lift the pelvis. Can you, can you feel that? Then you rotate the inner thighs back. So you kind of stick the bum out. Then you counterbalance that with lengthening the tailbone down. Now you're solid. Then you can press the knees slightly apart and come a little bit deeper. That's how you work it. So knees together, pelvis lifts. Inner thighs reach back. Tailbone tucks under to balance that. And then you can gently, gently apply a little bit of pressure to widen. And if you work that, say, five times, you will find that you can really have pretty soon a millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter more opening. And my teacher used to joke how you come out of that. I'll show you next week. Because when you come out, do it very slowly. Lift the hands, bend the knees, feet together, come up. And then feel what you have just done. And it's really the inner groins opening and widening. And I'd like you to know that when you work the hips that uh, intensely on all sides, this is also where we hold emotional centers. So when you have trauma or when you have um, um, fearful experiences, this is what the body does. It hardens pulls back, it tightens. So when you are allowing to work this deeply, it might not feel good instantly, but there can be a big release. And be kind to yourself and be very um, gentle with this. For the resting position, I'd like to offer the same frog position with the feet together. You know this one, when you lay down with a little support. So make two fists and place them to the outside of your hips. And you can stay there now for a little while. And this is extremely clever because it supports the outer hip bone and the leg feel the support. It's psychological and it's a release technique so that you can open and they feel, oh, I'm held. And then everything releases beautifully. This is also a beautiful position if you have period pain. This is the go-to posture for the ladies. Just a little twist. So you can stay there now and rest as long as you like. It's always advised to have at least a five minute resting period. I'd like to finish this session with a beautiful gong and thank you for participating. If you want to support us teachers, um, I have a donations page that I'd like to show Kofi. We do have this kind of work as our sole income and we are very grateful for what is the equivalent of a copy or two or three if you want to donate something it's very welcome may this practice help you to mobilize what is stuck be free to dance be open-hearted enough to 
to honor who you are. With all my blessings, have a nice day. Namaste.